So with the dog chasing its own tail, was Mr Keating about to pull in the leash? Well, I think monetary policy uh, is uh, sufficiently tight for the economic conditions Australia faces. It's no use uh, sitting where we are at the moment with just monetary policy chugging away and the metre running up at uh, a rate of knots. Uh, what we do need is some uh, very aggressive uh, jawboning by the Treasurer and some indications that fiscal policy will tighten in certain areas. For the moment, the Treasurer is sticking to his belief that apart from the housing distortion, inflation is not so bad as it looks. If we look at the last two consumer price indexes, that's September and this one, um, removing this measuring element in relation to mortgages, we would have the CPI running at 1.6% for September and 1.5% for December. In other words, now halfway through the financial year, the CPI would be 3.1%. It's certainly true that uh, housing costs made a significant contribution to the result, but even if you take out housing costs completely, and indeed take out other interest sensitive items such as consumer credit, you would end up with a result of about 1.5%, or in terms of the annual inflation rate to the December quarter, about uh, 7%. Though the statistics were blurred, the Treasurer's dilemma was clear. In what may well be a federal election year, economic stringency could be political suicide. It's a very tough year for the government and I sympathise with the things that I believe they'll need to do because they won't be well received by their constituents. And next, our studio guest, Environment Minister and ALP strategist, Senator Graham Richardson. After this. When do I get to hear Laurie? Well, I can hear you. How are you? Oh, I'm good, mate. And yourself? Oh, not real bad. I was just telling Jim, if you've got to cover an election, this is the place to do it. The weather's lovely. They tell me that you were very pessimistic on Friday about it, what ha would happen to the Labor government. Well, it's not a matter of pessimism. I'm impartial. I, I don't care what happens to either side, Graham. Well, from my point of view, anyone <laughs> who thinks the Labor government's going bad is being pessimistic. Oh, so right. I'm entitled to say Yeah, I, th I, th I thought you were done. Yeah. yeah so did you. Yeah. Yeah, it's out of doubting. Yeah. <laughs> I thought um, the likely result was a Liberal majority of something like three. Yeah. And I just got off the phone to Steve Smith a few minutes ago. Yeah. Uh, I am, I'm satisfied that that's what our probable majority is. One or three, yeah. Yeah, I think three. Mm. Our right. computer last night was saying three. Yeah, I think just for once it got it right then. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Just on two so we've, we've done incredibly well, really. Yeah, and up there, pinched another one. Yeah, this, this is outright thievery. Yeah, that's right. Uh, this was locked up in the, the other side's safe. But I think it, um, what, it, what it proves sadly is that, that plain men actually don't do brilliantly at election time. Well, I think that's a good thing to prove. Yeah. I've never been a believer in plain leaders. No. It's... Ask Barry Unsworth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I suppose you've got to say McKinnon didn't do quite that badly. <laughs> no, well, no one ever has. That no. was the worst result in electoral history. Yeah, at least Barry knew how to run a quick, clean election night. And that cliffhanger's there. Mind you, it took a long time to get him to concede. Yeah, I remember. A long time. Yeah. Well, you should have come over. The weather's great. I wasn't allowed over there during the campaign. Didn't you know that? No, I didn't know that. I was barred from Western Australia. Yeah, because the Nationals are the Greenies over here. Well, certainly not the Labor government, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah, I couldn't get down by the pool or on the beach because of my broken wrist, but everyone else has had a great time. Ramsey looks as though he's been on the Riviera. <laughs> and the people from Nine didn't have much of a chance, only a couple of days, but it's been nice. <laughs> Good. I'm really glad to hear that. Yeah. Well, how'd you break your wrist? But don't tell me. Mate, I was inspecting a national park. I, I thought I'd meet you there. You sure you weren't doing the thing that we've accused you of doing too often for too long? No, no. certainly not. Right. That's my left, left wrist, I told you. <laughs> on 30 seconds now. <laughs> no, I'm not ambidextrous, frankly. <laughs> Thank you.
One of the chief villains in the greeny house of horrors would have to be Tasmanian Premier Robin Gray. But recently he's shown signs of being a born-again conservationist, imposing tough rules to protect the island environment against pollution from a proposed chemical pulp mill. On Friday, however, pressured by jobs and dollars, Mr Gray agreed to reconsider those precautions, leaving Federal Environment Minister Graham Richardson as the final court of appeal for opponents of the mill. Senator Richardson is in our studio this morning to talk with him on yet another looming confrontation with Tasmania and to analyse the West Australian election, Sunday's political editor, Laurie Oaks. Laurie? Thanks, Jim. Senator Richardson, welcome to the programme. Thanks, Laurie. Before we deal with Wesley Vale, uh, the Labor Party managed to steal another election yesterday from the look of it. You obviously would have expected to lose that election. Well, Laurie, last uh, October, November, I saw research which suggested that we had absolutely no chance uh, of winning an election in Western Australia, no matter when it was held. The fact that we've won it uh, is an extraordinary result, and we've got to congratulate Peter Dowding, whose faith never flagged, and Stephen Smith, the party secretary, who ran a phenomenal campaign. Why did you win it? I'm assuming it, it turns out that way. What, what was the secret yesterday? Well, I think you'd have to say that, uh, that the campaign Labor ran was far better than the Liberal campaign. Uh, we were not uh, nearly as vindictive or nasty, and I think nastiness in the end often pays a price. The other reason, though, obviously, is that uh, Dowding had done very, very well for 12 months as Premier. No one could have done better. He campaigned very well, and people liked and trusted him more than the alternative. Well, what you're saying, really, in another way, is that, that plain leaders don't win elections, isn't it? Well, plain leaders don't have uh, a very flash record in, uh, in recent times, no. Now, Barry McKinnon, the, the leader here, is uh, supposed to be very like John Howard, according to the local pundits. Do you think that was the main factor? Well, certainly it's, it must have been a big factor. If you look at the results, the fact that the Liberal Party had a swing to it of only 1 or 2% is pretty remarkable. There were big swings against the Labor Party in some places, but they went to small parties and grey power. They just didn't go to the Liberal Party. So what's the federal lesson? Well, Laurie, uh, last year I was leaked some papers from uh, the federal uh, secretariat of the Liberal Party where they were uh, briefing Andrew Peacock on what to say at the Victorian election. And if uh, Labor were to win, then he was to uh, blame Jeff Kennett and the, the State Party. If uh, the Liberals were to win, then there was to be some credit claimed for John Howard. Uh, no one wrote my lines, and I'd have to say the same thing whether we won or lost. And that is that uh, federally there weren't many lessons. This was fought almost entirely on state cam campaigning. And you just got to say that uh, the lesson is uh, for the uh, coalition that uh, they did much worse than they expected. And I think there's a bigger message for them in the result than us. 